Now on 18 Eyewitness News. A new agreement makes transferring Southeast Missouri credits to MAC easier. Also, the governor extends the deadline to complete well drilling projects. And the Stoddard County Fair opens in Dexter. All of these stories. And could our morning lows dip into the 30s? Coverage you can count on. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins, and here are the top stories we're working on for you at this hour. A new agreement between Mineral Area College and Southeast Missouri State University means SEMO students transfer credits to MAC more easily. The agreement announced in Perryville Monday applies to current and future Southeast students. Now under the agreement, students can seek admission and transfer up to 52 credit hours at Mineral Area toward completion to their associate's degree. Well, now Dustin Comp is here with a look at our first forecast. It's been a little chilly, Dustin. What's in the forecast? Good evening, Fred. Good evening, everybody. We're seeing temperatures right now in the 60s, and we're going to dip down into the upper 30s to lower 40s tonight. Currently here in southeast Missouri, 61 in Festus and Potosi, as well as in St. Genevieve. Ironton right now at 62, as well as in Fredertown, 64 in Piedmont, and 64, or excuse me, 65 rather, in Poplar Bluff and Van Buren. Going through the evening hours, we'll see clear skies all evening long. By 7 p.m., 58 degrees, 51 by 9, and by midnight, we'll be down to 45. Lows tonight will be in the 30s, upper 30s to lower 40s. I'll show you all that coming up later in your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast. Governor Jay Nixon is giving producers more time to complete projects approved through a state cost sharing program to dig wells and upgrade irrigation systems. Wayne, Madison County Farm Service Agency Executive Director Stan Griggs tells 18 Eyewitness News that the extra time was needed because there are only so many well drillers in the area. Uh, when you only have a certain amount and, and they're so scattered out, that we was having trouble getting enough people to, to drill these wells. We we're running out of time. We still like probably 50% of our wells to be drilled. And by Governor Nixon giving us this extension uh, up to November 15th, I think we're gonna get everything done and everyone taken care of. More than 5,800 applications were approved for the program where the state pays 90% of projects cost instead of the typical 75%. Unfortunately, Griggs notes that need has impacted their fall programs. A lot of the disaster funding is going to come out of our regular cost share money now. Uh, so a lot of our seeding programs that we do in the fall is on hold right now. Uh, our grazing systems, we help with drilling wells and running pipelines there. Uh, so just call in and kind of see what's going on. The program's $29 million cost will be covered with funds from the State Soil and Water District Commission, Rural Development Dollars, and Emergency Management Funds. Well, due to a water main break, a boil water order is in effect for customers in Madison County's Water District No. 1. The affected area begins at Highway H and then south along Highway 67 through Cherokee Pass and includes all connecting state and county roads. Typically, a boil water order remains in effect until two consecutive water samples are negative for contamination. Well, Tuesday marks the opening of the Stoddard County Fair down in Dexter. Over the last four years, the fair has averaged 15,000 visitors for the week. Fair Board President Kevin Holman tells 18 Eyewitness News that they try to keep it affordable with just a $2 admission and lots of free entertainment. The Robinson Chainsaw Woodcarvers and Puppet Show will be there. They'll be there all week. Magic Mike Winters, a magician, he'll be there all week. Kevin tells us that one of this year's highlights will be Saturday night's Demolition Derby. It's been several years since the Demolition Derby has been at the fair. It's usually in October. We have one in May, one in October, but we decided to have it at the fair due to popular demand. So we're expecting a big turnout for it also. A fireworks display is set for nine Saturday night during intermission of the Demolition Derby. And when we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, we'll tell you how you can save three lives this Saturday. That story coming up only on 18 Eyewitness News. 
When you're looking for quality home furnishings, appliances, and more, look no further than Heartland Furniture and Appliance. Heartland Furniture and Appliance offers great low prices every day with 90 days same as cash, easy payment plans to fit your budget, no hassle leasing, and great customer service. With three locations to better serve you, the customers, in Donovan, Dexter, and Piedmont on both sides of Main Street. Heartland Furniture and Appliance, call 223-3200. Let it wash you this morning. Oh, the blood of Jesus shed for me. What a sacrifice that saved my life. What the blood, it is my victory. Take control of your future by enrolling at the Unitech Career Center. Discover a new career with Unitech's nursing programs or the opportunities with Unitech's sheet metal fabricating program. Or turn your hobby into a career with Unitech's power sports equipment program. From electrical trades to automotive technology programs, the first step to a well-paying future starts at the Unitech Career Center, Raider Road in Bonterre. For adult information, call 358-3011. For high school information, call 358-2271. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins, Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp, and Jeremy Martin with Sports. 18 Eyewitness News continues. You have the opportunity to save three lives this Saturday when you donate at the Froggy 96 Blood Drive. After donations fell to their lowest point in 15 years this summer, the need to build the blood supply back up this fall is extremely important. Dan Fox of the American Red Cross tells 18 Eyewitness News who can donate. Check number one, are you at least uh, 17 years of age? Or if you're 16 here in the Missouri, Illinois region, uh, can you get mom and dad to sign a parental consent form? If so, you're eligible to donate. Uh, do you weigh at least 110 pounds? If so, you're eligible to donate. And the, uh, the third kind of checklist to go off is, are you in overall good health? Dan notes that only 10% of eligible donors actually give blood. Now, you can help out by donating at the Froggy 96 Blood Drive Saturday from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon at the Farmington Fire Department's training room at 222 East Columbia. To make an appointment, call 1-800-RED-CROSS. Preparations are underway for the first annual Sandra Ellis Moore Memorial Scholarship 5K Run and Walk. One of the organizers, Rhonda Adams, was a co-worker of Sandra's at Wayne Medical Center in Piedmont. She was an LPN here at the clinic for over 10 years and, uh, you know, just loved by her patients and co-workers and everyone in the community. And we wanted to do something just to re in memory of her that we can remember her by. And we thought, what a better way to benefit a high school senior going into the medical field. Rhonda tells 18 Eyewitness News that they hope to make the 5K run and one mile fun walk an annual event. The Friday night of the fall festival every year is the plan and to start here at the clinic and go up the, the canyon road halfway and then turn around and come back. And the fun walk will just be like a one mile walk just for fun. No timing involved, no hurrying. You can do it at your own pace. Rhonda says they're looking for runners, sponsors, and donors to help get the scholarship going. Her contact information can be found on our website, kdkz18.com. The first annual Sandra Ellis Moore Memorial Scholarship 5K Run and Walk is set for October 19th. Well, the tour to Parkland will roll out this Sunday. The Park Hills Lettington Chamber of Commerce is offering three different events for riders. 18 Eyewitness News caught up with organizer Charlie Boyer at Mineral Area College, and he tells us the family ride will travel around the rural areas of Farmington, Park Hills, and Lettington. And Boyer asks on Sunday and every day that drivers share the road. Slow down when you go around them. Uh, Give them a friendly handshake and, and they'll give the same uh, sign back to you. Uh, it, it's just a way to, uh, to enhance that riding experience, which maybe you're not doing that now, but one of these days you may decide you want to be out there on the road with this guy. 
Boyer tells 18 Eyewitness News there's also a 50-mile adventure ride with an optional zip line run and an 82-mile ride to the highest point in Missouri, Tom Salk Mountain. An area judge is a finalist for a seat on the Missouri Court of Appeals. The Appellate Judicial Commission's list of 21 finalists for the seat on the Southern District Appeals Court included Associate Judge Scott Thompson of the Cape Girardeau, Bollinger and Perry County Circuit. Now the commission will interview all 21 finalists October the 11th and then name three nominees a day later for the governor's consideration. The opening was created by Judge Robert Barney's retirement last month. And still to come on 18 Eyewitness News, they are the most popular containers for household cleaners, but they're also the most dangerous. We'll show you the risk that spray bottles pose to young children and what some researchers are doing to protect them. Coming up next in today's Your Health. Fall-like weather's on the way here in southeast Missouri. I have all the details coming up next in your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast. When someone comes in a mineral area's emergency department, our focus is giving them the best treatment in the quickest manner possible. We track every single patient, sending the doctors information before they even walk in the room. We have dedicated x-ray and CT equipment in our emergency department. We don't have to waste any time running all over the hospital. We know that minutes count in an emergency, and you can count on ER Plus at Mineral Area Regional Medical Center. Now, here's your Storm Tracker 18 weather forecast with Chief Weathercaster Dustin Kopp. And welcome back. We saw a nice day here in southeast Missouri, a little bit on the chilly side, but not too bad out there. But we do have some chilly air moving in for tonight, but a nice warm up for tomorrow. Looking at weather headlines, wall, or excuse me, fall like weather is here to stay. Chilly tonight with lows in the upper 30s to lower 40s. And it looks like we're going to see some thunderstorms for Friday. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the 60s. 60 watt at Festus and St. Genevieve. Fredertown 62, as well as in Ironton, 64 in Piedmont. Van Buren right now at 65, as well as in Poplar Bluff at 63 in Cape Girardeau. Currently here at the studio, we're at 61 degrees, and that's what it feels like under a sunny sky. Current dew point 36, 39% humidity, and north-northwest wind at 3 miles per hour. Going through the day tomorrow, plenty of sunshine through southeast Missouri. High pressure system over Arkansas, and we're going to see nice weather for tomorrow, warming up nicely as well. Clear skies tonight, low 37, light variable winds, 40 in Potosi, 38 in Festus, 40 in St. Genevieve, 42 in Piedmont and Poplar Bluff. Then for tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, high around 71. It's going to be a nice day tomorrow, 73 in Potosi, 73 in Ironton, Van Buren, 75, as well as in Poplar Bluff, 73 in Cape Girardeau. The next several days are looking like this through southeast Missouri. On Thursday, plenty of sunshine, high of 80, nice day. And we got some showers and thunderstorms likely on Friday, high of 76. Back in the 60s on Saturday and Sunday, mostly sunny. And then 72 on Monday, sunny skies back up to 80 on Tuesday with more sunshine. Now look at our weekend forecast here in southeast Missouri. 66 on Saturday with mostly sunny skies, low around 41. Then on Sunday, another Chilly day, but not too bad. Plenty of sunshine and high around 65. That's checking your Storm Tracker weather forecast. More details located at kdkz18.com. Just click on the weather tab. Fred, back to you. The next time you clean your house, take a good look at your cleaning supplies. Chances are you have at least one spray bottle somewhere in your house. And if you have a small child, that could be dangerous because of their design. Studies show that spray bottles are one type of containers most likely to injure young children, especially if they contain cleaning supplies. But thanks to one group of researchers, that could change. With details, here's Clark Powell. 
While conducting a national study into the safety of household cleaners a couple of years ago, researcher Lara McKenzie says she was both pleasantly surprised and deeply concerned. The study showed that between 1990 and 2006, children poisoned or injured by household cleaners dropped an impressive 46 percent, but did so with one notable exception. We did see a huge decrease over that time period, which is the good news. The bad news is that spray bottle injuries stayed high. They didn't decrease like the other ones did. In fact, spray bottles accounted for 40% of all injuries, sending thousands of kids each year to emergency departments. These can be really serious injuries. That didn't sit well with this group of researchers at Nationwide Children's Hospital, so they decided to do something about it. They've designed the first spray bottle top with a two-trigger system. Adult hands are big enough to control both triggers, but as you can see in this focus group video, young children have a hard time understanding how the bottle works. And in the home setting, that extra measure of protection could make a big difference. Our technology has the potential to prevent more than 6,000 injuries each year, which is 18 injuries a day, which is about the same size as a preschool classroom full of kids. Researchers say studying different products and pointing out their potential risk is just part of their job. But it was a passion for protecting children that led this group to take the unusual step of turning an observation into a solution. At Nationwide Children's Hospital, this is Clark Powell reporting. The research team has applied for a patent for their design and are now looking for partners to help them produce and distribute the child resistant spray bottles. They hope to have them on store shelves and in your homes in the next couple of years. I'm Stacy Johnson. You know, the world has changed a lot since these guys were born, but you know what hasn't? Financial advice on television. Proof ahead on Money Talks News. Your Health is brought to you by Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy. Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy of Deloge, where caring for you and about you is our business. From taking time to explain your medication, offering a caring touch to a full line of medical equipment, supplies, and diabetic shoes. We'll help you understand your options and assist you with Medicare drug plan enrollment with a comfortable waiting area, convenient drive through or free delivery. Caring for our neighbors is our business. Your locally owned Parkland Health Mart Pharmacy just off of Highway 67 at the Deloge exit. When you're recovering from a traumatic injury, the last thing you need is an unexpected bill because most health insurers pay only a part of air transport. Our chair medical has a solution, the Omni Advantage program. For a membership fee of $49 per year, Omni Advantage guarantees you and other covered family members will not have to pay anything that your health insurer doesn't provide. In an extraordinary emergency, the last thing you need to worry about is cost. Contact our chair medical or visit them on the web to discover all the advantages of Omni Advantage. We're celebrating a milestone today. Money expert Stacy Johnson has been bringing valued financial advice to the airwaves for more than 22 years. Now here's Stacy with his 3,000th story. The web, smartphones, apps, online bill pay. The way we manage money has changed a lot over the last 20 years. This is my 3,000th script. I've been doing Money Talks News since before these guys were even born. I've certainly changed a lot, but you know what hasn't? The kind of advice I give. Let me show you what I mean. This is a risk ladder. Every step up means more risk, but also more potential for reward. We already know that bank savings accounts are pretty boring. So last time we took one step up by looking at mutual fund money markets. Today, let's take one more step up and have a look at bonds. Probably the best way to save money on food is also the healthiest, and that's to buy food in its rawest form and prepare it yourself. How much are you worth, honey? That's a tough question to ask, but you know what? You better, because marriage is sharing. And if your combined net worth is negative, maybe that's something you should find out before the big day. Even if you've got a perfect driving report, you could pay 30% more for your car insurance than somebody who's got both a perfect driving record and a perfect credit history. So what you've got to do is keep one eye on the road, but the other one on your credit report. Co-ops help small businesses survive, and so should you, because these businesses are often owned by your neighbors. So next time before you go shopping, think local first, unless you like the idea of a world of Walmarts. Bottom line, 
Things are strikingly different today than they were 20 years ago, and so am I. But you know what? Financial fundamentals, they never change. Meet me here 20 years from now, and I will prove it again. In the meantime, if you've got money questions, I've got money answers. They're right here at moneytalksnews.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. And as Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website, kdkz18.com, and click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles tab. And coming up in sports, the Astros try to spoil the Cardinals' march to the postseason. Rams coach Jeff Fisher clears up questions about Steven Jackson. And South Carolina loses one of their hardest hitters for the Mizzou game. Attention, Accutane warning. If you have Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or inflammatory bowel disease, it may have been caused by the acne drug Accutane. Accutane victims have recently been awarded millions of dollars. Do not delay. There are time deadlines to file a claim. Call the Rely On Group now to be connected with an experienced attorney. There is absolutely no risk on your part. You don't owe us a penny unless we are successful. Call the Rely On Group at 800-698-3105. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call 1-800-587-7095. This is Sports Zone, only on 18 Eyewitness News. The Astros are in prime position to have an impact on the race for the second National League wildcard spot when Houston and St. Louis begin a three-game series Tuesday at Bush Stadium and then play another three games next week in Houston. On Sundays, the Cardinals beat the Dodgers 5-2 in 12 innings to take a one-game lead over Los Angeles for the second wildcard spot. The Redbirds are two and a half games ahead of the Brewers and three games ahead of the Pirates. Rams coach Jeff Fisher says an injury kept Steven Jackson off the field Sunday, not punishment. In the second quarter, Jackson ran for what appeared to be a touchdown and then spiked the ball. The refs didn't see the score and whistled Jackson for unsportsmanlike conduct. Now he came out of the game after the penalty and did not return. Afterward, both Jackson and Fisher said the running back suffered a groin injury on a 20-yard run before the touchdown. No injury was reported to the media, which is standard procedure, leading many to think that Jackson was being disciplined. Seventh-ranked South Carolina will be without one of their hardest hitters for Saturday's game against Mizzou. The Southeastern Conference announced Monday it suspended defensive back D.J. Swearinger. Now, in reviewing tapes of South Carolina's game this past Saturday, Commissioner Mike Slive says Swearinger targeted contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent. One example of a defenseless player is a receiver whose focus is on catching a pass. Now, the NCAA Football Rules Committee and the SEC have made protecting defenseless players a point of emphasis this season. And that's the day in sports. Fred and Dustin, back to you. Thanks a lot, Darren. It's been a busy day here in local news, weather, and sports, and it's also been a nice day here in southeast Missouri. Will we see more nice weather? Let's take a look at our extended forecast. We're going to see lows in the upper 30s to lower 40s tonight, but tomorrow warming up nicely to 71, plenty of sunshine. Then on Thursday, probably sunny, 80 degrees for your daytime high. Then we do see some showers and possibly some thunderstorms on Friday, 76, then mid-60s for Saturday and Sunday. Plenty of sunshine. Sunshine continues Monday and Tuesday. By Tuesday and next week, we'll see temperatures near 80 degrees. Well, that does it for all of us here at the Dawkins Broadcast Group. The news doesn't stop, though. Just go to kdkz18.com for your latest news, weather and sports, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Have a good night, everybody. News Watch is next. We'll see you tonight at 10. Do you see news happening in your neighborhood? Email us at news at kdkz.tv. Here's what's coming up tonight on KDKZ 18.